Welcome back to another video guys. In this video I want to talk about our, ma our drag mesh. So the mesh we're going to create based on this drag. Okay, so we're going to convert this 2D object, this 2D square or rectangle into a 3D mesh that projects into our world and we want that mesh to collide with our units to determine whether we've selected them or not. If that mesh is collided with our units then we know they're selected. Okay, but what I want to talk about in this video is how we're going to convert this 2D this 2D drag into a 3D world object. And to do that we need to understand how the camera works and things but I'll go through that. So from the previous video we uh, we created a cube using primitive uh, procedural primitives. So in this video all I've done is copy and paste the code into a method that creates a cube. I've called it create drag box mesh. Okay? I've got a new game object here called drag select mesh. I've just applied that cube to that game object. So it, just put a mesh onto this game object and on the start method that mesh is created and put onto this game object basically so that the cube is created as soon as we start this script and every single frame when we drag we want that object to update we don't want to change the triangles we don't want to mess about with the UVs and the normals the only thing we're interested in is changing the position of each vertice or each vertex in the game Okay, so we write about this section here in this video. I just want to work out the points, uh, each of the eight points in 3D space. Okay, and uh, the length, the width, and the height is based on the uh, the shape of the drag. Okay, well the length, the length is debatable because that's going to project into the game. So if I jump over to this and start using my pen tablet, I can explain what the shape is going to be like. So we're going to take each of these eight points and work out where they are on the 3D object. And that's really important because in the next video we will know where the vertices are and then we can just take each position of each vertex and, and then work out the correct position. Okay, so I'm just going to jump over to this thing. So in order to work out the shape of this object we need to understand how the camera works. So I'm going to put a point here in 3D space and this is going to be my camera. So I'm just going to make a really quick camera. Okay, so every camera we know has a near clip plane. So I'm going to draw that near clip plane in here. Alright guys, so here's the near clip plane. And as you notice, as we d increase the depth of our camera, the, the field of view increases. So we can see more of the scene as we dive deeper into the, into the depth. Alright guys, so if we continue these lines, as you can see they just keep expanding and expanding I can just increase these four lines for a sec so the last one is there I think so very very rough guide so as you can see if we draw for example our 2D drag on the near clip plane because at this point it will be 2D I know that's not the case because we've drew it on the, the screen coordinate system rather than the world coordinate system but this, at this point, if we draw our little GUI box here, for example, that's going to be 2D. And as we give it depth, it will increase in um, scale. So in other words, if, I, if we want our GUI box to exist here, it won't be this size anymore. It will be a lot bigger. So it will be this size. Okay, guys? So the further we travel into the, into the world, the bigger the box will be. And I know I'm going to have to make that bigger. So that's going to go down and that's going to go there. Okay, so this this determines what shape our mesh is going to be. I'm going to just delete some of these lines so we can get a feel for the shape we need to create in our game. Okay, so that's going to go away and um, let's just get rid of our little GUI box thing here. Okay, so this is our shape. It's kind of a rectangle, but one side has been squashed down. And as we travel further into the game, the 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 other side of the rectangle increases in scale, and that is our shape. Okay, guys. So we know what the shape is, but now we need to work out where these points are in 3D space because he's worked out kind of uh, the position of the points, but we don't know which side they apply to on our object. So we're going to work that out now. I'm going to make another layer. And I'm going to change the color just so things look a bit easier to understand. Okay, so this is my origin in my game. This is zero zero in world units, and uh, things travel outwards like that. So from this we can understand. Well, this is going to be the length of the box. Let's make a better line for that. This is going to be the length. Okay. This is going to be the height. 
and the width, well the width travels this direction, this is going to be the width. Okay guys, so from this little diagram we can then work out where each of these points are going to be. So the reason he's put 0.5 on every single calculation is because he wants the origin of this object to be in the center of the mesh. Okay, so he wants his origin, his his zero zero relative to this object to be in the center of this of this mesh. That's, so we're going to start from here. So all we need to do here is look whether the length, the width, and the height is positive or negative, and then travel in the right direction to figure out where the points are. So for point zero, he's travelled in the negative length, the negative width, and the positive height. And we know, well, the negative length will be back towards zero because the origin is here, and then it travels outwards. So as this travels outward, it, it increases. We know that. Negative. So negative length, starting from this position, we're back here. Okay, negative width, well that's back there, and positive height goes upwards. So this is going to be point zero. Simple as that guys, we just worked out point zero. Point one, so positive length, negative width, positive height. Okay, so positive length, now we're going to travel up to the top of the object. Positive length, negative width, positive height. Negative width goes back to the origin, and a positive height. So this is going to be point one. And we just need to continue this process until we found out each of the points of the box. So point two, positive length, negative, negative. So positive length is this direction, negative width, and negative height. So the height will just go back down to here. This is point two. And I'm guessing point three will be here. So let's just double check. Negative length, negative, negative. Okay. So traveling back the length, the width, and the height, and that we end up here. Point three. That's cool. We've worked out the first points in the in this object. Point four, negative length, positive width, positive height. Okay, doing this thing again. Negative length go down here. Positive width, positive height. So this is going to be point four. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Point five, positive length, positive width, positive height. Okay, so traveling outwards for the length, positive, positive. Point five is here. Two more points to go. Point six, positive length, positive width, negative height. Positive length, positive width, negative height. So point six is going to be here. And by the process of elimination, to save a few seconds, point seven is going to be here. Okay, so this is it, guys. This We've just worked out where each of the points are going to be on our 3D mesh. So we don't have to worry about this anymore. And I've just okay let's just do that okay so this is our object and that's all cool because now we can go ahead into unity and uh, work out this this mesh we know the shape of it now and we also know that each of the points position so now we can dive into into unity and create these and edit these vertices positions alright guys so I hope you've understood the video and where we're going with this after we've created the mesh we can put a collider on it and work out if it's actually collided with other objects in the game. So thanks for watching the video guys, hopefully see you in the next video.